Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Bible. My name is Rogan and you are watching The Mysterious Stoner in Ebola. In this series we take the Bible quite literally as it says and we just go through it and we commentate, well I commentate on it. I was raised to believe this book King James Version, original version, specifically, and uh, I was raised to take it literally and, uh, and to believe it, and I was even trained to preach it, and I, I have in fact preached from the pulpit several times in my young adult life, um, but I am not a Christian anymore, and so I'm going through it, and we're talking like the title of the series says, the good and the bad of the Bible. Yes, there is bad in the Bible. In, in fact, I've covered quite a lot of it up to this point, and we are still only on Exodus. So, join me if you will, and let's dive in. Now, I'm not going to do a recap right now. We're, we're with the children of Israel and Moses in the wilderness. I'm just going to go over two small things um, that I found of interest in my previous reading. And the first story it comes, comes like this, you see. Uh, Moses is in the wilderness with the Israelites and as it so happens his father-in-law that was uh, taking care of his wife and his children while Moses was away getting the Israelites out of Egypt. Um, well, his father-in-law and his, his, all his family show up and meet up with Moses, and they're all hanging out there. And while they're there, Moses is doing his daily duties of judging, it's, it says judging the people, that's how he describes it, or the Bible describes it. But Moses, Moses basically, Moses, here. <laughs> Uh, he sits down and is listening to all the problems of the people individually and is making decisions between all of them. Uh, of a whole fucking nation. So I... It, it's pretty crazy how one-on-one -on -one he's getting with them. Um, but he's doing this and his, uh, his father-in-law sees this and he's like... What the fuck are you doing, man? Like, you're gonna burn yourself out doing this. Like, come on, get some guys to help you. And also, we covered the good, the bad in the Bible. We have a bit of good advice here. And I, I said it in a nutshell, but his father-in-law says to Moses to gather a bunch of guys who are. Um, who are able to, to lead and to teach them what the laws of God are according to Moses that God told him in private so no way to prove if Mo Moses is making me obvious up or not but um, His father-in-law tells him, you need to get some, some other rulers, or some other people to judge for you so they can take care of all the smaller things, the, the, the more menial issues. And, you know, you, you, need to, you need to create a structure here so that you have different levels of people that take care of different levels of issues. And then you will just take care of the really big ones that come up, the ones that require your attention most immediately and most up front, the, you know, the biggest, most important for the leaders, you know? And so that's good advice. I agree with that advice, absolutely 100%. If you're going to lead, the bigger the group of people that you are going to lead, if you're going to do it right, you're going to need help. You're going to need other people to help you lead. You'll need support, people that 
you know, agree with you and are willing to teach the same things, uh, well, learn the same things you learn and teach the same things you teach in order to help you lead. But the funny thing I find about this is that this idea does not come from God. Which is I, f I find unusual because well, God's been giving all the instructions so far as to how to lead the people of Israel, telling Moses to tell them what to do. He's given Moses instructions every step of the way so far. But he hasn't told Moses to do this, to get more leaders. In, instead, it's this human being. Like, uh, he, he doesn't even say that God told him to tell Moses this. It, it seems more like it's coming across as Jethro is trying to give, well, that, that's, his, that's the, uh, uh, Moses' father-in-law's name, Jethro. He's trying to give Moses some basic, logical leadership advice. Why wouldn't God give this advice to him? Sorry if I seem a bit distracted. There were some people coming and going around the house, and I'm <laughs> I'm sitting in my car parked in front of the house where I rent a room in currently. Uh, looks like uh, we're having a, another potential tenant coming in. So anyways, just an interesting observation there. Um, I mean, Christians will say, <coughs> naturally, that, well, God clearly inspired Jethro to tell Moses to, to do this. And I say, okay, prove it. Because there's no verse saying that. And, I mean, God clearly, I, I suppose he doesn't have a problem with it because he doesn't stop Moses. <laughs> You know what, maybe God was like, hmm, I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. You know, I wish that was my idea, but um, because it wasn't, I'm just, I'm just not going to say anything. It's a good idea. You should probably do that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Moses, what, what's your father-in-law said? Sure, absolutely. Because, <coughs> I mean, really... God's been so talkative with Moses, and he doesn't say this to him. Well, I mean, God has been acting like quite a bit of a dick, and has some very weird concepts of, of things in life, and has some weird demands of his people, like having them all being circumcised, like it somehow matters. Can just make everyone right the first time. It's like I, I don't think penises became in need of getting circumcised when sin struck. There's no Bible verse about that. You know, God just made us the way He did, and then it's like, oh, if you're loyal to me, you got to trim your penis. Yeah, nah. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying that rubbish. Absolute rubbish. But we move on from there. And we are approaching the, well, you may have heard of it before, it's called Mount Sinai. People have moved and they have arrived at this supposedly a very holy mountain but it's called Mount Sinai and uh, supposedly God is there and it's <laughs> and it, it it's making it sound like God is going to come down and see and, and speak with the people 
and God even tells, uh, well, he gives Moses instructions to tell everyone to wash their clothes and to, you know, no one have sex for three days before this goes down. It was, it was, it's not, it, it was weird. But the cleanliness part made sense, but, you know, I mean, come on, you can't, you can't have sex for three days before this. Like, really? Really? That, God's got an issue if uh, you... No, no, no. God has an issue if you have an empty jizz sack. Is that, is that right? God, God wants everyone loaded and horny on sperm. <laughs> uh, he likes that abstinence shit. He really does. I mean, well, that's how Christians make it out to be with their purity. And their, their purity balls and and ring and such. Thank goodness I was not in that position. Oh. Dodged a bullet on that one, I must say. Although my parents still made a very big deal about purity and all that shit. I'm getting off track again, sorry. But they get to the mountain and one of the... Well, li listen to some of the instructions that God gives to Moses. This is, this is what I really want to focus on at this point. He says, And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned. Not... Not, not the fun kind where you, that, like, literally have rocks thrown at you till you die kind of stone. Or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. So, anyone, aside from Moses and whoever God allowed, which was basically just Moses, and sometimes Aaron, and sometimes, I think he had some of the elders later on come up with him part of the way up the mountain, I think. But basically very, very limited number of people. Anyone else who came through were to be killed. Fucking killed. Executed. And... You know, I don't know why, but originally when I read this, for some reason I thought that God would strike them dead. I don't know why, but honestly that would make more sense. Because that would, I mean, that would show the power of God. You're just going to get executed for crossing this line to go onto this mountain? Re really? No, no, that doesn't, that doesn't make me fear your God. That makes me fear your sanity. Or the lack thereof. You're not proving anything by threatening to kill me if I climb up this mountain. You're not proving to me that you exist. You're going to have to do better than that. You got your goons to kill me for you, but you won't do it yourself. Really, what, what is God afraid of? To have Moses tell the children of Israel to set up bodyguards. That's basically what they are, bodyguards, around the mountain to make sure no one crosses that line. And if they do, to kill them. Even if it's an animal. Why an animal? Why? The animal, technically the animals never sinned. They never did anything wrong. Sure, they uh, technically they were affected by sin like everything else, if you're going by that. But that wasn't their fault. Why are you going out of your way to kill them for just doing what you programmed them to do? and to behave the way they behave. 
That's not on the animals, that's on you. If you want the animals dead, you should kill them yourself. What's it matter if they cross that line? That line in the literal dirt. Or sand, or rocks, or whatever it was. God's got a thing for killing, I'm telling you. No, 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 I'm not telling you. The Bible's telling you. <laughs> Literally, this is chapter 19. And then, oh, it gets, uh, it, get, it gets great after that. Um, this next part is crazy. And I'm not just saying that because I'm stoned. And well stoned, for that matter. God, it's getting dark. I've got home. Oh shit, I've got an audience. Fuck me. Anyways. Yeah, there's someone in a vehicle next to me. Uh, prob <laughs> probably staring at me. And um, wondering what the fuck kind of a lunatic I am and what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyways, to this crazy, <coughs> crazy little, little verse I want to share with you. Um, uh, same chapter, chapter 19, um, he says, um, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So, so what do we have here? All right, we've got thunders. Oh, it's in the morning too. Interesting, interesting. It's in the morning, so um, sounds like a morning morning showers possibly. Yeah. But we've got um, <coughs> we've got thunders. We've got lightnings, light lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mountain. Yeah, so it sounds like a thunder and lightning storm has descended upon the mountain. And then it says the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. Hmm, what could that be? Well, of course, the people here are thinking that it is God. Might I offer another explanation? What if? I mean, let me, let me ask you this. Le All right, okay. Sorry. Let, let me ask you this. How would you describe the noise that a car makes when you beep the horn? The average modern day car typically sounds... If, if I can find a sound bite and include it in here, it sounds a lot like a trumpet, in a way. No, I'm not saying it was a car horn. I'm saying... What if it was aliens? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, think back. Think back to... Remember, we talked about in the episode where um, the Israelites were walking through the desert and they were being led by, it says it was God, but it says that it was a, um, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. What if it was actually a cloaked, invisible alien spacecraft making that smoke, making that fire, making the wind, like maybe it had some kind of jet turbine or something to make the waters of the Red Sea stand apart, but it could still remain invisible at the same time. I mean, alien technology, anything's possible, right? Why not? Why, why, why would it have to be God and supernatural? How, how, because that would make too much sense, possibly, because that would be explainable, because that would that would totally break a 
a lot of what the Bible is all about and what it, uh, like, of who the main character is of God himself. That God is possibly an alien. What, and what, why can't, why can't this alien ship just shoot individuals that cross this line? Why is it got to have people do it for it? Does it not have guns on its ship? Or, or what? Or is it just fucking with Moses and the children of Israel to try and manipulate them, to try and gain some sort of power in the world through manipulating an entire nation? Probably make a movie out of that. That'd be a crazy movie. A whole nation tricked by an alien race into thinking that the aliens are gods and the aliens enslave the nation of humans and make a whole religion out of it. Jehovah, that's just some god the aliens gave to the Israelites. Maybe. Maybe. And honestly, I would find that more believable than the fairy tales in this book. Like, that would make some of this shit make sense. Some of it. I still wouldn't want to worship the guy. I wouldn't want to pray to this alien. Screw this guy. Whoever the fuck he is. But to me, this just sounds like... I mean, they, they won't let people up into here, but they'll let Moses... And then Moses comes back with this... Well, that's a different story. He comes back with a shining face, and he has to wear a veil because of how bright his face is. Totally different story. But you guys have a great rest of the weekend. Also, definitely don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you enjoyed this video. And be sure not to miss out on next week because next week we are going through the Ten Commandments. I will see you next time. Stay safe. Until then, my friends.